In this video, we'll review the Pythagorean Theorem. Let's start by learning some of the vocabulary for right triangles. In a right triangle, the largest side is always called the hypotenuse. This would be the hypotenuse for this triangle. The hypotenuse is always found away from the right angle. The other two sides we'll call the legs. The legs are always adjacent to the right angle. In fact, the two legs will always form the right angle. Where they meet has to be the right angle. Now these terms, legs and hypotenuse, are only used for right triangles. If it's not a right triangle, we refer to them as just the sides. Now there's a special relationship that works only for right triangles, and it compares the legs and the hypotenuse of a right triangle. It is known as the Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem says leg 1 squared plus leg 2 squared equals the hypotenuse squared, or the sums of the squares of the legs has to equal the square of the hypotenuse. Now we're going to use this to solve for unknown sides of right triangles. And there's actually another use of the Pythagorean Theorem which we'll look at afterwards. So let's look at a few examples of how to find the missing side to a right triangle using the Pythagorean Theorem. Now notice, the Pythagorean Theorem here says it only works for right triangles. It will not work for any other triangle other than a right triangle. And um, if it um, does work, then it must be a right triangle. So it's kind of a two-way thing. It only works in right triangles, and if it does work, then we know it's a right triangle. And that's what we're going to be looking at over the next couple examples. All right, to begin, in the first examples, I recommend that you figure out which piece is the hypotenuse. Once you know where the hypotenuse is, the other two sides must be the legs. In this case, in example one, the side that is away from the right angle would be side x. The other sides would therefore be the legs. So the side that's 12 inches and 5 inches are the legs, and the side that is the unknown x is the hypotenuse. Now, substituting these values into the Pythagorean Theorem, we see that the hypotenuse has to be by itself, in which case x would be by itself. Setting it up, we'll say that 12 squared plus 5 squared equals x squared. Now, you could also say that 5 squared plus 12 squared equals x squared. The order of the legs is not important. You just got to make sure the legs are together, hypotenuse by itself. Now, in this class, we're going to justify. Anytime we use the Pythagorean Theorem, we're going to give it credit. So next to the problem, either above it or to the side, we'll write Pythagorean Theorem. Now to solve for x, we're going to square the terms. 12 squared is 144, 5 squared is 25. Combining like terms, we'll get that 169 equals x squared. To solve for x, we'll take the square root of both sides, and we get that x equals the square root of 169. The square root of 169 is a perfect square, and it is just 13. So x equals 13. However, when you get the answer, make sure you're getting a unit for it. We need to know what we're measuring in. In example 1, the dimensions of those two legs are in inches. Therefore, the hypotenuse would also be measured in inches. Therefore, x equals 13 inches. In example two, we're again going to find the hypotenuse first. The side that is away from the right angle would be the 10 meter piece. That makes the x and the 6 the legs. Setting this into Pythagorean theorem, the x this time is not by itself. x is one of the legs. So when we set it in Pythagorean theorem, we're going to say that the 6 squared plus the x squared then equals the 10 squared. 10 is by itself because it is the hypotenuse. Squaring these numbers, we get that 36 plus x squared equals 100. Now this time I actually need to get the x squared by itself, and I'll do that by subtracting 36 from both sides. I get that x squared equals 64. Take the square root of both sides. x equals the square root of 64. 64 is also a perfect square. The square root of 64 is just 8. Now these measurements were given to the problem in meters, so we'll say that x equals 8 meters. Now let's look at one more example. Before we do that, take a little notice at the thing on the bottom. This is going to save some of you some grief and uh, wondering why you made those points on the tests or the quizzes. Pythagorean theorem says it is the sum of the squares of the legs. Notice the problems are all set up using addition. They are not set up as a subtraction problem. Okay, again, Pythagorean theorem is the sum of the squares. Do not set it up as subtraction. It needs to be leg 1 squared plus leg 2 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. Now in our last example, we're going to see something a little different here. Spend a moment, figure out which ones are your legs and hypotenuse. Set it up into the theorem, and then work out your answer. Pause it. When you're ready, resume the program and check your answer. I'll give you a moment. All right, hopefully you've worked this out and you see that you're getting a little bit different answer this time. In this case, the x and the 9 are the legs. Again, they're adjacent to the right angle. 
away from the right angles that I hypotenuse, the side that's 12 feet. Substituting these values into Pythagorean theorem, we'd get that the x squared plus 9 squared equals 12 squared. Squaring the 9 would be 81, squaring the 12 would be 144, so we would get 81 plus x squared equals 144. To isolate the variable and get x squared by itself, we'll subtract 81 from both sides. x squared therefore equals 63. Taking the square root of both sides, we get x equals square root of 63. Now this time, 63 is not a perfect square. If we take the square root of 63, we will not get a whole number. Instead, we're going to get a decimal. And we got to understand where we're going to round this decimal. For this class, we'll round two decimals past the zero. So in this case, it's going to be 7.937. When it's 7.937, the 7, the third digit, tells me that we need to round up. When you use the rounding rules, if the third digit is 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, you round the number up. If the third digit is 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, you round down. To round down, you just cut the term. So it's either 7.93 or 7.94. Because it's 7.937, we're rounding up, and 1 bigger than 93 is 94. Therefore, this x is about 7.94 feet. A couple things to point out. When you do this, make sure you use the approximation symbol. You'll notice on that last step down there, it doesn't say x is equal to 7.94. It says x is about. When you round, you must show that it's an approximation. Now, there's actually another use for Pythagorean theorem. Not only can we use it to find the missing side of a right triangle, we can also use it to figure out if a triangle, given all three sides, is a right triangle. And here's two examples of this. In the first example, we know that we have a triangle, and it says the sides of the triangle are 12 centimeters, 15 centimeters, and 9 centimeters. We want to know that this is the right triangle. In this case, we'll do it by substituting the values in Pythagorean theorem and seeing whether it works. To find the hypotenuse, we know that it has to be the biggest side. In this case, 15 is the largest of the three numbers. 12, 15, and 9, the biggest side would be 15, which makes the 9 and the 12 the legs. The picture would look like this. Now, we don't know if it's going to be a right triangle. That's our question here. If it is a right triangle, then it'd have to work in Pythagorean theorem. And the way to figure out whether it's a right triangle, then, is to substitute those values in Pythagorean theorem and see if it works. Okay, we know that the hypotenuse has to be by itself from our previous examples, so we'll set it up like this. We know all three values. So we're going to say the 9 squared plus the 12 squared. Does it equal the 15 squared? Squaring those numbers, we get that 81 plus 144 equals the 225. 81 and 144 is 225. In this case, the side to balance. 225 equals 225. This is a right triangle. We know it's a right triangle because we just proved that it works in Pythagorean theorem. Any values that work in Pythagorean theorem has to be if it's a right triangle. If it's a right triangle, Pythagorean theorem works. The converse being, if it works in Pythagorean theorem, it's a right triangle. All right, figure out in the next problem, if we have lengths of 14, 10, and 4, what side would have to be the hypotenuse? Hopefully you said 14. 14 is the largest number, so that would be the longest side. Substituting these values in, we'll see that the 4 squared plus the 10 squared, we want to know, does it equal 14 squared? 4 squared is 16, 10 squared is 100, 14 squared is 196. Adding these values together, we get something that does not equal. 116 does not equal 196. Therefore, this will not make a right triangle. We know it doesn't make a right triangle because it doesn't actually work in Pythagorean theorem. Now later on, we're actually going to learn that the sides 4, 10, and 14 can't even form a triangle at all. But we'll save that one for another lesson. All right, I hope this helps you understand Pythagorean theorem, and thank you for watching.